sun is a star, quite an ordinary star. It looks so much more splendid than the other stars, only because it's so much closer to us. All the stars we see at night time are themselves suns, some of them much larger, hotter, and more luminous than ours. But of course, they're a great deal further away. Even the nearest star beyond the sun lies at a distance of around 24 million million miles, or 38 and a half million million kilometers. Even our best telescopes can't show stars as anything more than specks of light. I'm quite sure that many of them have planets moving around them, just as the Earth moves around the sun. But I'm the first to admit that I have no proof. When we look up into the sky, we see many stars. We can see many hundreds of them. They form patterns, and these we call constellations. We've given them attractive names. The Great Bear, the Lion, the Scorpion, and so on. But the stars are at very different distances from us. And so the stars in any particular constellation are not genuinely associated with each other. We are dealing with nothing more significant than a line of sight effects. Also, the stars are not really fixed in space. They're moving around at all sorts of speeds in all sorts of directions. But they're so far away from us that their individual movements are too slight to be noticed, even over periods of many lifetimes. To give you a comparison, picture a bird flying about a tree to a height, and a jet aircraft flying against a cloud background. The jet is really travelling much the faster of the two, but because it's so much further away, it seems to move much more slowly than the bird. I don't mean any bird as it burns the sound barrier. This means that the constellation patterns we see today are, to all intents and purposes, the same as those that must have been seen by Alfred the Great, Julius Caesar, or the builders of the pyramids. Around the sun move nine planets, one of which is our own Earth. Mercury and Venus are closer to the sun than we are. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto are further away. The planets have no light of their own and shine only because they reflect the light of the sun. They look like stars and the first five are bright, though the three outer worlds are much fainter and discovered only in modern or near modern times. Unlike the stars, the planets wander slowly around from one constellation to another, but they always keep a certain well-defined limits. For example, you will never find a planet in the famous northern constellation of the main there. Before going any further, let us set the orally in the December position and explain what it means. We know that the Earth moves around the sun in a period of one year. Actually, it's 365 and a quarter days, but in ordinary life, we round this off to 365 days. This means that the sun appears to go once right around the sky in a period of one year. It moves along a well-defined track and passes through 12 constellations which make up what we call the Zodiac. These are called Aries the Ram, Taurus the Bull, Gemini the Twins, Cancer the Crab, Leo the Lion, Virgo the Virgin, Leibler, Scales or Balance, Scorpius the Scorpion, Sagittarius the Archer, Capricorn the Sea Bird, Aquarius the Water Bearer, and Pisces the Fishes. Though a, a 13th constellation of each of the Serpent Bearer does actually cross the Zodiac between Scorpius and Sagittarius. Of course, we can't see the Sun and the stars at the same time, but it's not hard to work out just where the Sun must be in the Zodiac at any particular moment. By the way, you probably heard about birth signs connected with the Zodiac constellations. This is astrology or astronomy, and it's complete nonsense. The birth signs don't even correspond with the actual constellations. Obviously, this means that our view of the constellations must change throughout the year. For instance, in December, winter in the northern hemisphere, summer in the southern, the sun is in Sagittarius, the archer. So the whole of that part of the sky is above the horizon only during the hours of daylight. Now let's return to the orrery and see what it can tell us.